Okay, let's work on problem 25 in page 92. And the, in this segment, let's take care of the parts A, B, C, and D. Okay, so the problem asks, uh, what's the pH of a 0 0.2 molar solution of A, phosphoric acid, B, KH2PO4, C, K2HPO4, and D, K3PO4. Uh, by the way, these would come under different names. KH2PO4 could it be potassium dihydrogen phosphate, or could it be monopotassium phosphate. And C is K2HPO4. One can call it the potassium hydrogen phosphate, as only one hydrogen, or depotassium hydrogen phosphate. Putting here the pKa for phosphoric acid, 2.12, 7.21 for the pKa2, and finally the pKa3, which is 12.31. This is on a table, and a problem would be given in a data bank somewhere. Okay, for the first problem, we have phosphoric acid, right? So phosphoric acid is going to dissociate in the first step, H3PO4, going to give H2PO4 minus plus H plus. Right, so that's the, the first step of dissociation. If we put phosphoric acid in water, there's no strength to remove all the protons, so just the first one is going to be dissociated. So therefore, we are here dealing with the first step of the pKa1, step one. We have pKa, so that we have Ka, pKa is 2.12, therefore the Ka1 is 10 to the power of negative pKa, means 2.12. Now we know uh, we can calculate what Ka from that, Ka1 is going to be 7.58 10 to the power of negative 3. Not very strong. And the concentration is 0 0.2 molar. So 0 0.2 minus x is going to be dissociated in the x and the x. Well, I'm going to make it simple here, okay? I'm not going to put 0 0.2 minus x. I'm going to just use the approximation. So that's Ka1 is going to be equal x is squared. Technically speaking, you should put 0 0.2 minus x and solve the quadratic equation there. But let's make it simple now. And put 7.58, 10 to the power of minus 3, equals x squared divided by 0 0.2. Therefore, you can calculate the x from here. x squared is going to be 0 0.2 times 7.58, uh, 10 to the power of negative 3. And from there, we can calculate the x. I okay, could do that directly in the calculator. And get the square root of that number. X equals 0 0.039 molar. And the X is the concentration of protons. So therefore, the pH is going to be minus log of that concentration, pH being minus log of the concentration of protons 
equals minus log of the concentration of 0 0.039 molar, but we don't need molar here for the equation pH. Then calculating here the log of this number. And we get the pH equals 1.4. This is a good approximation here. With the proper calculation, should be a little bit different from that, probably around 1.5, but that's fine. That's just an approximation here. Uh, let's now move to part B of the problem. Thanks to another page in here. Part B of the problem gives uh, the potassium dihydrogen phosphate or monopotassium phosphate, right? You can either use the index for the hydrogen or for the potassium, okay? So the potassium dihydrogen phosphate, right? Two hydrogen, dihydrogen. All right, so let's put the full dissociation of phosphoric acid here, the full steps, the three steps. The step one that we looked before, the first step is that it gives off the first proton and generates H2PO4 minus. That will be the Ka1. And then the second step, H2PO4, gives up the second proton and becomes in equilibrium with HPO42 minus now, K2. And finally, HP, when all protons are gone now, HPO42 minus give up the last proton and, and it become phosphate. PO4, 3 minus, that's pH, 3, okay? So now the problem we are dealing with, remember, K uh, is just an spectator there, right? It's going to just dissolve in the water, and, but the H2PO4 is participating in two steps in here. H2PO4 here is going to be giving up a proton, and they also H2PO4 is participating in step One. So remember from what we discuss in class, when we have a situation like that, we just look at the two Ka's and the pH, regardless of the concentration, is going to be the mean between the two pKa's involved in the process. Note, we are not using Ka3 because that's not part of the picture here. So it's going to be pKa1 part pKa2 divided by 2. And it's regardless of the concentration there. So we just calculate the pKa. Uh, we have the pKa actually from the table. So we're going to take the average of that. It's going to be 2.12 plus 7.21 divided by 2. This whole thing gives 4.67. So the pH is going to be 4.67. So all we have to do is to find out which steps are involved there so that we can use the proper Ka. Okay. Now let's look at it, moving the page, and it looks to another one that's C, part C of the problem. K2HPO4. Now we have potassium hydrogen phosphate or dipotassium hydrogen phosphate. So let's again look at the three steps. The more you write the thing, the better it will become. First step of phosphoric acid, giving out the first proton, become H2PO4 minus K1. And now H2PO4 minus uh, give out the second proton, associated in H plus and the H. PO4 2 minus, this is KH2, and finally HPO4 giving up H plus plus the phosphate. This would be step 3 KH3, and phosphate is 3 minus. All right, so now we are dealing about HPO4. 
nothing to do with this step one anymore. See here, HTO4 is not part of the picture. It already passed that step. So these are the two entities that we're going to be looking at. So KA, KA2 and 3 Again, a very simple problem that we just calculated the, the average here between the PKA2 and PKA3. All we have to do in this case of this salt is to look at whether you are in between step two and three or step one and two. Okay, so the average is 7.21, 12.32 divided by two is 9.76. Yes, pH is going to be equal uh, 9.76. All right, so let's move on to part D of this problem. It's a long one. Part D of this problem. Part D is K3PO4. Now is a uh, the salt that we're going to put it there, there's no protons anymore. So what this salt is going to do when you put PO4, 3 minus in water, is going to hydrolyze. A problem of hydrolysis here with a weak acid and a strong base. So you can already predict from here what's going to happen. The pH has to be high. So the phosphate undergo hydrolysis, generates HPO4, Two minus and the OH minus. So we start with 0 0.2 minus X, generate X and X. One could use that trick of contents of hydrolysis that we discussed before, but let's use KB here, this is the base, and the equilibrium constant would be X times X divided by 0 0.2. We know the Ka, pKa, better say, this would be pKa3, right? Which is 12.32. From there, we can calculate the pKb would be 14 minus 12.32. In other words, it would be pKb equals 1.68. Now we can calculate the KB from that. KB is 10 to the power of a negative PKB. So again, the calculator gives 0 0.02. Let's present a little problem here because it's a very large KB. It's, uh, it's not a very weak base, so that's therefore the association is not very small. We have to be cautious here. We can make this approximation Let's use the X. Sorry, we have to work a little bit harder on this one. Minus X, I added now, because we have to solve this quadratic equation there. Okay, so that's KB 0 0.02, just replacing here. <coughs> and the X square e equals KB. times 0 0.2 minus x, the denominator term there that we are using now. Okay, so this is equals 0 0.004 times 0.02x. Let's rearrange things in here so that it will become plus 0.02x and minus 0 0.004 equals zero now. Okay, so we have a solution for this is use the Bhaskara formula that's minus B plus minus B2 minus 4AC divided by 2A. Welcome back to the days of high school. All right, so X 
it's going to be equal minus b, b is 0 0.02002, 0 .002, plus minus b squared, 0 0.02 squared minus, from the equation, 4 times a, a is 1, times c, c is minus 0 0.04, so let's put as it is, Later on, it's going to become positive because of the minus of the formula, 0, 0, 4, and divided by 2a, and the a is 1, so it's divided by 2. Let's simplify this thing here to find the solution. could plug in the calculator directly as well. x is equal minus 0, 0, 2 plus minus square root of uh, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 2 here to give 0, 0, 4. Four. Oops, uh, zero, 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 four. Yeah, all right. Fixed. And the other term there would be 16, but it's a plus because of the minus of the form and minus of the number. Zero, zero, one, six. Beautiful. Divided by 2a. Okay, we'll, the term inside there. And obviously, you are going to discard the, the, the negative term. There's no point for the solution here. We're going to use only the positive term of this solution. Square gives a, ne a positive and a negative one, so that we use only the positive part. Right, x equals minus 0, 0, 002 plus minus 0 0.128 divided by 2. All right, so the minus and the minus would be a negative number that's no negative concentration, so there will be no meaning. So we are going to use the minus 0, 0, 002 plus 128 that gives plus. 0, 0,108 divided by 2 gives 0 0.054 molar. We finally got the concentration of uh, the hydroxide. Now we're going to calculate the pOH and subsequently the pH. 0 0.054 molar for hydroxide. And the pOH is going to be minus log of this concentration. One point twenty seven, and now the pH is going to be that the difference to fourteen. We're going to fourteen minus one point twenty seven uh, gives us here twelve point seventy three. That's the solution for the problem. Twelve seven three.